Okay, so Gragas Zaya down, but Vi up of the big three blind picks. Every time T1 is in the lobby, they ban Kennen first. T1 just ban Kennen Insta straight up. Okay, so normally off of a Rakan, what we'll see is Jinx or Aphilios plus Fresh from the enemy, right? That's usually what we'll see. If they go jungle match, you are basically guaranteed to see it. So right now, Aphilios Fresh or Jinx Fresh is pretty much guaranteed. Jinx Rakan's kind of shit, so you often just see it Wait, the Powerpuff Girls are up! Alright, um, fresh ban immediately because you missed the opportunity to do that. I think if you and RE plus Zeri plus Vi, I, I don't really care what the enemy pick at that point. I think your synergies are way too good. Uh, with Aphelios, Crowny has to actually be good at the game. Um, the other aspect is that B-Boy is basically an Aphelios one trick. Well, at least he was in Europe, I remember. So, maybe. Maybe, maybe there's a good logic to it. And honestly, Aphilios with any kind of purple setup sets up really well for RE Vi in a similar way to how Zeri does. I just feel like Zeri in this comp has the ability to become an obscene hyper carry. They're going for this. The wild PNG players sight their prey. With great ease, they take them out. Okay, denied the rest of your stacks. Mana flow band about to be up. Grass being stacked by Zeus. Mana flow up, grasp up. He's going for it. He's going for the angle. He's trying to find it. Boom gets one. Now he wants to get the fuck out of dodge. Photon, one more until Conqueror is up. And he has Q up in one sec. He gets the Conqueror stacks. Does not continue to trade. Zeus, a massive shield here. Has mana flow and grasp up again. Nice, nice, nice. Gets the mana flow, doesn't get the glass. Photon gets control of the- Whoa! 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 Okay. This point here, no fury, no stacks, nothing. And he gets the glass tick out. And you have absolutely no fury, no cooldowns, nothing. Why wouldn't he go in, right? Look at the timing at which he leaves. Ability is about to come up of Photon. Boom. Out. Nice. They both play their mini games, but the moment one of them fucks up, the other one's like, oh, you're mine, bad boy. You're mine. I mean, you don't like this wave, but it will eventually push back into you anyway. This is way too close to the tower. Oh, what? Wait, let me see this. Oh my god. I have to see it from his. It's all, it's all about the timing, boys. What is the timing? Okay. Uh, skill difference. Skill difference. Skill difference. Skill difference. Right, Crowley just absorbs all of this coming back. Holds the cannon. The cannon will allow him to potentially... Just slow push on the next. Actually, he's saving it for Keria to grab. Because otherwise, you'd start like a giga slow push from here to here. Maybe they want to do something with that. I don't know. Like, if you start the slow push there, B-Boy and Sten, they would just recall, come back in with... Eh, decent, decent items to try to match yours. And, yeah, I don't think you'd like that as well. He gets in, he gets the root on. They keep hitting each other with a thumbs up. Let's just go back. Bonk. Bonk's B-Voy goes on stand, but effectively B-Voy gets to do as much damage as he wants to blitz without Crowny being able to do any on towards B-Voy. Crowley tries to trade to Stend, but unlike Blitz, Stend can then move to the other side of B-Boy. So now we're in this position. If Carrier moves up, it gets very dangerous. Crowley moves up, all right, because he is about to be on white. He does fucking red Q. Now they have to leave range. <gasps> oh, no. Just barely doesn't. B-Boy's going to get this. Yeah, B-Boy gets this.
Fuck, man. Fuck. Lose. I mean, do you need explanations for this? Like, you're already in a bad state on the lane here. Peng could help him out. He'll lose wave on mid if he does. But I guess it is real to help him out here. Why why, why don't they think Wukong could be anywhere nearby? Is there a particular reason? Did I miss something? And especially that you want to do rounds of LeBlanc as well. But they think they see an angle to fight this on bot side. They think they see it. Like, if you can match and you can win a fight, sure, but, like, retreat options are everywhere for these guys, no. Oh, they actually do make a good pick here. They... Oh! He's dead to the burn. He's dead to the burn. Crowny goes for Whitear. Can't stay in the fight, though. Yep, okay. Their judgment was correct. Their fighting judgment there was correct. They could just go straight for the fight on bot. Fair enough. Yeah, no, well judged by them, right? If you can't win that fight, you do the you do the two lane trade every time. If you can't win the fight, you do the two lane trade. If you think you can win the fight, then you go for the fight on bot side. So long as someone's making a definitive call, because let's bear in mind, three of them are literally on the same team. So long as someone's making a definitive call about whether you can or can't win the fight and then the decision comes, then you're doing the right thing. And the rest of it becomes about that judgment. Again, this play extends, LeBlanc's gonna be here. So do you really wanna do this, right? Ari's not here, I guess Popster will be here on the extension as well. And Photon doesn't have TP. Yeah, Red are trying to back it into their corner so that LeBlanc can beat Poppy. In. Also, obviously it's just harder to play here, right? They, they equalize the numbers before Popster can get here. It's now 3v. Right, but you are down ults. They should have hired Winter's Ward. Heal to the face. Coming down. Oh! <laughs> Shit! What happened? Fuck, man. He just kept asking for more, but the thing is, he has, like, R the whole time as well, by the way. Ooh, they do so much damage! Peng with the E charm, he gets the right one as well, but that guy is on 300 HP, and Crowley's the only guy here. Scared to move up in there, doesn't want to get insta-turned on. Could be Herald. Yep, it is Herald. Interesting to see how they drop this, because they could also just be really boring and just drop it mid for this. Making a bot play on that Herald would be really weird at like 20 minutes itself. Enemy does have a decent-ish during this team. Oh yeah, 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 you're hidden under the Drake. So you aren't affecting numbers advantage, so these guys need to collapse on any one of these guys to diminish that. Peng is forced out, now they collapse all the way onto the absolute worst top lane ever to join. Champions Q Zeus. Zeus gets utterly obliterated. Karlok as Wukong just solo zones 50 people. Zeri explodes all over their faces. Gets one, gets two, gets the complete ace. They don't get the soul, but they do get the ace, and they have Baron, and mid is pushed, and there's the teleport coming out. Top's pushed as well. They're looking for the finish the game angle. Did I request a SN change already, or are you still MSI Champions Q user 71? I'm still MSI Champions Q user 71 or whatever the fuck. Okay, this is a really obvious Merc's Trez angle on Ari if you go Silas here. I don't even think he has good ults to be stealing. It's kind of mental. Why wouldn't you go fresh? Especially for comp. Leona was the other champ we talked about, but why wouldn't you go fresh? Hey! I fuck with Ash. I fuck with Ash here, right? 
it's, it's a little bit less viable into the re but like it is this is the worst case scenario for um for the affiliates there now the counter to that would be on i think you go on top here like for sure you go on top no like you're into double low mobility and realistically the only thing that you need to hard counter is the jinx uh we're watching bot lane all right i mean but imagine if this was like fleet jinx of dawns by the way holy shit they just go ham no but i think he can afford to just do this and go ham too like the problem is affiliates is fucking useless level one man oh they're fisting the fuck out of them I think, did they deny DV? They did not, no, they didn't deny him all the XP, but they did deny him XP, right? That's Jinx XP, that's DV XP. Oh, This looks like they're losing the trade, but Heal is already out on Carrier. Heal is still up on Jopper. Jopper is chugging two more pots here, right? Theoretically, there are two more points chugging on DV as well, but these guys have the ability to recall and DV does not, right? And, biggest thing, and the thing that we are always saying every single fucking time, right? Who actually wins the trade? None of what I just said matters. It's always whoever's jungle is closer, and we know they're opting into a map split. So, DV is like all inning on one side to try a force trick away. Keria is trying to fix the wave. They're really trying to like do something to avoid this. Keria has started with E. No polymorph coming out here. Trick's going to get the CC on level 2! Okay! So it's an AD for jungle trade. That definitely favours blue team. Jopper going back in for the second. And Korea. He, he can do what he wants over in Korea. But over here, alright, it's our piss randoms that we don't know about who will carry the whole game. We actually do know a lot about this guy. Um, he's actually pretty good. Diego's moving bot. Because they know they have to fight. He knows they have to fight. DV trying to farm with range Q, right? Look where he's on now, right? That's all the range Q's going. So it does kind of mess up his gun rotations as well doing this. Um, he's probably just going to Q on this guy with red. Now it's up, but Keria's going to have to die for this. Oh! And he did manage to exhaust red first. So his gun rotations, not fucked. Gets the Q off, gets a free gun combo going in. Gets the root. He has blue Q. He's going for it. Oh, man, he really wants the splash damage on comp. He's just not in range. That's a double. And it goes into the six, man. Holy shit, man. Keria can't handle EU rookies. There's your video title right there. This is one of those trade on the next wave for two lanes while they go for one kind of field things, right? Because if DV moves up there, he just locks himself in with Maokai. He just locks himself in with Maokai, you know? He's not equalizing. He He's equalizing if he either forces Trick off or they go Giga Shallow into mid, right? He's equalizing if they go there. The roll swapped comp. Like, the only guy completely Giga feeding his arse off on blue side is Zeus, right? And the lane Giga feeding its ass off on red side is bot, alright? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He's scared. He'll stay in solo queue, Faker. Alright? Stay in solo. Oh, now we go mid! Now! Now that our NAR is fucking reset, and we've already died 2v2 bot, now we fucking go mid. Now we do it. Okay, whatever, man. Alright? Now we make the play. Imagine if you and DV were able to be at the same time, you fucking midget. Imagine. Maybe that's the thumbnail. What the fuck? T1 sucks? Brackets G2 hard winning MSI. <laughs> so the team that wants the fight is red team, so to speak, because they have Cassante here. You can play to burn his TP, right? Whereas if they allow the map state to continue, then blue will definitely be ahead. If you can find the pick fight, you go for it, right? DV about to exhaust green into blue. So this is effectively blue R that we're looking at here, right? He actually goes for green blue. Okay. Okay. 
Alright, so that blue R was not real, but I think he should have just played for blue R. Like, Q green, blue R, mark into purple Q, or whatever. And depending on the range he's on, like, obviously blue Q. Oh my god! Did he try to go for the hero play here? Yeah, he went for the hero play. He tried to, like, catch him. But, buddy, none of your burst is able to get on her even if you do catch her. Right? Like, you alone are not going to burst her right now. Like, that, like, buddy. Like, he, he tunnel vision way too hard there for the hero play. Way too hard. I think he's thinking maybe Gale Force and Blue Q is enough on that. But I, I'm not convinced. Viego's a comp-dependent champ. Anton. But in the right comp, I think it can be really good. This wouldn't be it. I mean, it would be it if we were consistently doing blue R's here, and if R we had, like... I mean, if this was Lissandra and we had consistent blue R's, then maybe. Yeah. I mean, the big the big takeaway here is that then Voxne, like... He should turn down the T1 offer that he has, you know? I mean, he's too good for this guy. He's just being run down by his support all game.